Hello, good evening, everyone. All right, so my name is Morton Elizabeth Na Abiana, and then I must load the um, organizers for this event. I came here thinking I was coming to give a talk, but I've actually learned a lot of things. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a doctor um, by the grace of God. So um, when the organizers contacted me that they wanted me to speak at this event, I was wondering what they want me to say. And he was like, you know, Dr. Martin, we want you to tell us how you achieve such a great feat. And I'm thinking, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to tell these people? I mean, so if you came to listen to you know, 10 steps to become the valedictorian or three steps to become the best in your class, step one, step two, step three, yay, I made it. I'm sorry. I don't have any foolproof steps to give you, but... Um, with the team, big changes through small acts. I think I can just share my experience in school and maybe you can pick a few tips from it and then I believe it will help us all. Am I right? All right. So um, looking back, I came back to, I came to school in 2015 and um, when I came, I didn't come with the mind, you know, to dominate you know, to be the best. I'm sure some of you, there, when you came here, your mind was, you were the village champions. As you came here, dear, everybody must see that you've arrived, but it wasn't my mind at all. I didn't even know what a valedictorian was at that time. But also, I also didn't come, I came with the mind to not be just an average student. So it all begins with the mind. No matter how equipped and adept the body is, it is useless if the mind is not stable. That's why mental health conditions are such a, you know, a serious problem because no matter how well learned the person is, no matter how well trained the person is, if the mind is not stable, if the mind is not capable, the person cannot do much. So it begins with the mind. I have people in my class who say, oh, media 50 plus one. I just came for 50 plus one. I just want to pass. You know, know all these stress, all these things, 50 plus one. But mind you, some of those who say that to go back to their rooms and they're like, they'll really be on it studying. But it begins, it begins from the mind that, okay, so if your mind is 50 plus one, it can easily become 20 plus one because the exams do not favor anybody. It can go this way, it can go that way. And um, the aim you have when you are going um, into an academic battle um, influences how you learn. There's a way you learn if you want 50 plus one. And there's a way you learn if you want to get like 95, you know, ish, yes. There's a way you learn. And so if you are learning like the one who wants to get 50 plus one, it can easily go sideways and then you can end up somewhere else. So, I mean, it begins from the mind. Um, I'm a Christian, so I'll throw in a few quotes here and there. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if your mind is, I just came to pass, you know, and just you know, make it through the system and then just pass out of here. Eventually, that's who you are going to be. But the downside is that you can easily, you can easily, I mean, go down and you can end up at a place where you didn't want to go. So it all begins with the mind. And also, I came to realize, I used to ask myself, why didn't I go to AIS? Why didn't I go to GIS? Why did my parents take me out of the country to go to Texas or Houston? Why Ghana? Why Ghana? <laughs> why Ghana? I mean, why wasn't my father a minister or something? So I like, they will push me up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But then I realized that you can't do much about your past. Some of you, before you even got admission, you had to write no deck over and over and over again. Some of you had to write the wasi all over again. I mean, to even sit here in this room is such a great feat. You can't really do much about your past. I can't do much about the senior high school I went. I can't do anything about the primary education I had. But from this moment, what happens in the next year, in the next two years, solely depends on me. So maybe you went to school under a tree somewhere. And you went to some senior high school that no one knows their name. Some people in my class, their SHS, I never heard the name before. But the person made it to medical school. It made me realize that your past doesn't define who you are or who you can become. Probably you're even doing a course you didn't want to do. I heard that, I won't say this, but I heard that most male nurses are disappointed doctors, but <laughs> I beg, don't carry this anywhere. But you realize that most people are doing courses that they didn't want to do. And what can you do about that? You're already doing it, and you're already here. But the past cannot define your future. 
you may not be doing the course you 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 want to be doing you can change it you cannot change it sometimes you can change it sometimes you have to go through it to the end but then after that what you become solely depends on you so this is also still about the mind that don't let your past define who you become in the future you may not have started well but what is going to happen the next year in the next two years solely depend on you so start from your mind psych your mind that this is where I want to go and then you start find okay so how do I make it there now in relation to your background some of you um, for example like me back in senior high I used to study alone I was a lone ranger um, no group studies no nothing no nothing so I came with that same mind to see to I mean to tertiary that I've been studying alone and I'm going to do it alone and I realized that it's easier said than done in, in tertiary, it's, it's very difficult to go through it alone without studying with anybody, without having a group study and all that. So please, I'm not sharing tips on becoming valedictorian. I'm just, I'm just sharing my experience, my academic experience as a student, and I'm just hoping that it will help us. So I realized that studying, I mean, going for group studies, hearing others, interacting, asking questions, discussing questions made a big difference in, in my academics. And that was one of the, the small things that made a great change. I mean, that made a big difference in my academic status because I came with the mind that I've done it before by myself, so I can study alone by myself. And then um, in school, I was involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. So my time wasn't very, um, my time was very limited, but I still had to find a way to factor in group studies in my in my schedule. So um, I had a group, um, I had a group study, but I, Sometimes I go, sometimes I don't go. But then I had a dedicated study partner who would go for the group studies and she would come and watch me. Do you understand? So there's a way to go about, there's wisdom to go about um, whatever it is that you are doing. And also in school, I had to do a lot of things. I had to sew. I was doing, I mean, I was alternating clothes to be able to get a little coins for my in and out and all those things. So um, I had a lot of things. I was also involved in church, spent a lot of long hours in church. But I see to my brethren involved in church work, you can't see that I went to study, I, I went to do the work of God, I went to preach and all those things automatically. When I sit behind the people by the grace and by the anointing, I will pass. Like it doesn't work, it doesn't work like that. It, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. The Holy Spirit will not descend and come and write your paper for you. But it is said that the hand of the diligence shall bear you. So when you come back, no matter the time you came back for whatever it is, some of you are involved in business, you sell so below, you sell this, you sell this, you sell this. It doesn't make you less of a student. But just that when you come back, you'll be more tired than the rest of the people. You come back, you have less time than the rest of your colleagues. But then it's it, it beholds on you to sit down and to make much of the little time that you have. So some of the people see you coming back late at night and they'll be calling you shark, shark, shark. And in that thing, don't let it bother you. Ask the person's calling you shark. You don't know what the person is doing behind the, behind the scenes. Sometimes they'll come and they'll come and say, oh, hey, you, people are the, you people are the good students. Oh, you people are those who want to pass. But Charlie, everybody wants to pass. So everybody has an inherent desire to pass. Just that not everybody should it Genesis. so don't let that one disturb you that hey, if I come out to study people will be seeing me and then they'll be thinking that a hey, me I'm the one who wants to pass everybody wants to pass all right so no matter what um, activities you are involved in as a student it beholds on you to always remember the purpose for which you came to school you came to school to pass so yes I will encourage you be involved in all the things that you can because in school you also you're also supposed to learn social things you have to make friends network being I mean be a good Christian or a good Muslim or a good traditionalist whatever works for you so I mean but you shouldn't come and then base your performance on that study to show yourself approved no matter what you do some of you cook and sell all those things are good but when you come back no matter how tired you are sit down some of you do makeup and all those things that's something i've been trying to learn but it's not working for me <laughs> but but no matter what you do when you come back sit down and study and then i also realized that um as the earlier speakers were talking about technology, I realized that there's a lot of things you can do with technology. And um, in school, I, I, 
I mean, I developed the joy of studying with short um, academic videos. They really help. They break down facts and give you understanding of these things. So something that your lecturer will spend hours to explain in class, a short video will give you diagrams and break it down. So I mean, when we're talking about the technological age, I really...